Remember carpet, we're now talking about the pelvis, the pee. Generally speaking, when you have a pelvic fracture, your bleeding is not arterial, but your bleeding is venous. Let me ask you a question. Which do you think is harder to control? Arterial bleeding or venous bleeding? Oh, venous bleeding is much harder. Let me explain why. Arterial bleeding, you can see it, hear it, and feel it. It goes pew, pew, pew. If you put a clamp on the blood vessel, that clamp attaches to a muscular wall. The artery has a muscular wall. The veins do not. Veins are like wet tissue paper. They tear. So venous bleeding, all surgeons hate venous bleeding. And in the pelvis, most of the injuries cause venous bleeding, not arterial. Why? Because there's an awful lot of veins in the pelvis. Now, the initial treatment of a pelvic fracture injury causing shock is mobilization. Let me say that again. The initial treatment of a pelvic injury and shock is immobilization, meaning you want to stabilize that pelvis. How can you do that? Well, you can use a sling. A sling is perfectly fine for stabilization. You can use external fixators. You've seen that, those pins that come out. And that's the step one. Step one for treating a pelvic fracture with shock. Well, what do you do if it doesn't work? You do not operate. You do not operate. Meaning if you open up the belly and then cut the pelvic peritoneum, you will get into a disaster. You, you will get it. The tamponade will be lost. You'll try to clamp veins and it'll be like wet tissue paper. You don't do that. If the immobilization does not work, the treatment is angiographic embolization of the hype gastric artery, angiographic embolization of the hypogastric artery. Remember, what's the hypogastric artery? The other term for the hypogastric artery is the internal iliac. And on your test, they may say hypogastric as opposed to internal iliac. Don't get confused. You don't want to angiographic embolize the external iliac or your legs will fall off. You don't want to embolize the common iliac or your legs will fall off. You do the hypogastric or internal iliac. Now you might say to me, I thought you told me that the bleeding was venous. And yes, it is usually. But what you're doing by angiographic embolizing the artery is your stopping inflow of blood. So that's why you do that. Next, you got a patient who comes to you with gross hematuria, gross hematuria after trauma, gross hematuria. Guys, whether it be a gunshot wound or a blunt trauma, Every time you have gross hematuria from trauma, you have to think about two organ systems always. Kidney bladder, kidney bladder, kidney bladder. I don't care if the gunshot wound is right by the kidney or right by the bladder. You can't be sure. You have to evaluate kidney bladder, kidney bladder, gross hematuria. And how do you evaluate kidney bladder? both of them by CAT scan, both of them by CAT scan. So again, this is very important, gross hematuria, gross hematuria, bladder kidney, bladder kidney, bladder kidney, 
or kidney bladder, whichever way you want to look at it. But you got to evaluate both because you got to be what? Safe. Now, let's say you got a patient after a pelvic injury or trauma has blood at the tip of their meatus. Can you put in a Foley catheter? No. You must first make sure the urethra is intact. What do I mean? If you have a tear of the urethra, of course, we're talking in the male, and you put in a Foley catheter, you can convert a partial tear into a complete tear, and then you're in trouble. So what you do is you do very simply a retrograde urethrogram. All that means, you know what little IVs, the plastic covering, you put the plastic covering through the meatus in the penis, you squirt a little contrast and you take a picture. And if the urethra is intact, you stick a poly in. If it's not intact, you call a urologist. Tip of the penis, of the urethra, blood, think about urethra injury. Now, taking that a step further, if you ever can't feel the prostate, they call it a high riding prostate, you can't feel it at all, then you really got a urethral injury. For sure, you're gonna call the urologist. So in other words, after your physical examination, if you had blood at the tip of the meatus, but you had a normal prostate and you did a retrograde urethrogram and it looked fine, fine, put in a catheter. If you had blood at the tip of the uh, urethra and you can't feel the prostate, just stop right there and call the urologist because you've probably got a very severe injury. Very important, okay. You don't want to make things worse. Now, let's talk about a very important point. An adult is playing football, is playing soccer. And let's just say they get a little bit of an injury and they come in and they have microscopic, not gross, not gross, microscopic hematuria, microscopic hematuria. Do you have to work up in the adult microscopic hematuria after trauma? No. Meaning, guys, as an adult, if you played football, if you played soccer, if you played basketball, if you ran a marathon, and they immediately took a urinalysis on you, you'd have microscopic hematuria. You don't have to work it up. But follow me. In a child, in a child, the child falls off the tricycle. And they come in and they have microscopic, microscopic, again, gross hematuria, bladder, kidney, bladder, kidney, bladder, kidney, okay? But microscopic hematuria in a child. Do you have to follow that urine? Do you have to repeat a urine in a week? Yes, not because of the trauma, not because of the trauma, but to make sure that the child doesn't have a congenital abnormality. That's so important, I'm gonna repeat it. If a child has trauma and comes in with a microscopic hematuria, do you have to follow it a week later and repeat the urinalysis? Yes. Why? Not because of the trauma, but because of the possibility of a congenital abnormality. Test question. Very, very important. All right. There's a young man or an old man or whatever playing football or playing basketball and they get hit in the scrotum and they get a huge scrotal hematoma. 
the only thing, the only thing that you have to worry about in a scrotal hematoma is whether the testis is intact. That's the only thing you got to worry about. And if the testis is intact, you're home free. You just wear an athletic supporter and it'll take time and go away. And if the testis is not intact, you got to operate. So, how do you evaluate if the testis is intact? What you do is you get an ultrasound, very simply. So with a scrotal hematoma, the only thing you gotta do is get an ultrasound to make sure that the testis is intact. If it's not, you operate. If it is okay, you just wear an athletic supporter and you wait. A guy comes in the emergency room and tells you that he slipped in the shower and broke his penis. Guys, one of the things you have to do as a physician, you will encounter situations that may be a little embarrassing for both the patient and possibly you, but you're a doctor and you must address this. Okay, so a patient comes in and they tell you they slipped in the shower and their penis broke and they have a hematoma around the shaft of their penis. Guys, they did not slip in the shower and hurt their penis. What happened was they were having rough intercourse. And when you have rough intercourse, you can actually tear the uh, tunica albuginea, the corpus cavernosus of the penis. And you will get a huge hematoma. And guys, that is a surgical emergency. That is a surgical emergency. Meaning you can't just sit on that and watch it because what will happen is if you have a tear of the corpus cavernosa, the tunica albuginea, and you allow it to heal, and it'll heal on its own, you will get a Pyronis syndrome. You know what Pyronis disease is? Where not only will the patient have a tremendous pain on erection, but also the female, when they have intercourse, will have pain. Let me tell you a story. For some reason, I take care of a lot of policemen. I do. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm in Chicago. I don't know. But I have a lot of patients who are policemen. And one thing I have learned about policemen, they're tough cookies. They are. They are strong, tough cookies, okay? It's probably an overgeneralization, but I've always, in all the years I've been in practice, they're tough people. And I have a patient who's a policeman who, oh, this was a few years ago. He came into my office and he said, Dr. Hill, can I see you alone without your medical students? I said, sure. And what happened was he tore his corpus cavernosus, tunica albuginea, during sex, and he just let it heal. And he told me, he said, now, every time he gets an erection, um, he has severe pain and his wife has pain on intercourse. Guys, to operate at a late stage for this is an exceedingly complex procedure. And so therefore, what you want to do is if someone has this, you want to operate straight away. And it's not a difficult operation, but you gotta operate straight away. You can't allow it to heal by itself. And why do I bring up this point so much? Again, it's very important for you to be able to talk about this with patients. Now, um, with this patient, 
who I was very close with, I asked him, I said, geez, you talk about everything with me. You know, you come see me frequently. I take care of, you know, you and your family and everything. Said, Why didn't you tell me about it? And the patient said, you know, I just thought it would heal by itself. Again, it was a mistake in his judgment. I asked him, I said, do you want to go through the procedure? And he said, no, because it's too complex. But just remember that. And by the way, those of you who might watch Grey's Anatomy, which my wife is addicted to, um, there is an episode of Grey's Anatomy where this actually happened to Dr. McSteamy, I believe, Dr. McSteamy. All right. 